Hey guys, I'm Bianca Bruce. I'm a business and branding strategist. And tonight, as I'm taping this with Julie, my daughter behind the camera, I am wanting to share something with you about happy hour. So if you're watching this in the morning and you're having a cup of coffee as you're, you know, putting on your makeup or doing the dishes or preparing your day, cheers to you with coffee. I am holding a glass of wine in my portable wine glass, this world is an amazing place that we can have wine glasses with lids on that look like they've been carved out of wood. But uh, Jules and I were talking about happy hour. You know, she just turned 21, but we've been doing happy hour since, what did you say, Jules? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Sixth grade. And what happy hour looked like for us at the time is, you know, I would pick her up from school, then we would go to a happy hour place. And she just loved those little tiny, portions that you get at happy hour and she would get a Shirley Temple and I would have a glass of wine and it was a perfect space for us to just connect with one another, have some food, have an experience together, but really talk. Talk in a place that uh, was personal, where we could be just about each other and we could just process through some of the things that she was going through, share about experiences that she had at school. Well, then that just wasn't good enough, right? Because every cool experience and every amount of connection that mothers can have with their children, uh, connection comes at a high, high price sometimes with your kids because you, uh, you just never know what's gonna work. So when you find something, you do that, you just go with it. So we decided that what we wanted to do was walk around our neighborhood and we would just walk uh, and talk about her day or my day. And sometimes we would get in arguments. Sometimes we would, we would, you know, we would have like a disagreement as we were walking and talking, but we always decided that by the time we got home, we had to have worked through it, right? We, we had to have just, processed some some part of that so that we wouldn't carry that into our house or into our day uh, into our evening rather why it worked is that there's something about connecting as you are surrounded by routine of the experience of happy hour we always knew that there was going to be another happy hour right we always trusted that this was not just one time event that, that this was going to be something we're going to do again so there's something about that that deepens connection and that uh, creates just a foundation for growth and for dealing with hard things. So in this last 10 months or so during the pandemic shelter in place, one of the things that her and I have noticed, and I'm sure you have noticed as well, is this, this thing that connection is really, really challenging, right? Not just with people that we don't get to, socialize with anymore, right? Our friends, our, our distant families, uh, our coworkers, our clients, our potential clients, our community, uh, whether you're going to church or other social gatherings or uh, networking events, whatever it may be, we are no longer connecting that, the way we used to. Uh, but also in our families where we live with each other, our experience has been that even in the family, we're having a difficult time connecting with one another. It's almost like we're taking it a little bit for granted. We're all around each other all the time. So creating that intentional space, happy hour, walk and talk happy hour, is something that we've gotten away from and we are planning to, intentionally resolving to, picking it back up again. We are wanting to get back to where we regularly, that for us was multiple times a week, uh, more days in a week than not, regularly connecting with one another, walking those same streets, walking by the same homes, by the same trees, knowing that this is our special time. So somebody said to me the other day, planning for 2021 is silly. You shouldn't even bother because look at what 2020 has offered and it's been such a cluster and I'm so with you and I totally disagree on the idea of not planning. I am wanting you to plan, not because planning is a matter of guarantee or promise 
or control even. But planning is an expression of almost like hope, right? An expression of purpose that we are intentionally aiming to go and head somewhere that we are intentional about expressing and working our value proposition. So being intentional about connecting, being intentional about growing, being intentional about healing. We're going to have a lot of healing to do. Being intentional about self-care, taking good care of your body and your mind and your soul. Um, Putting a stake in the ground and saying, this is where we are so that you can look back and say, this is where we were, this is where we've been, this is where we've come from. I believe that that is so powerful. So I wanna encourage you to plan. Think about what you wanna plan for. I plan on doing more of this. I planned to do that 2019 and then 2020 kinda took it out, but it's okay. Because it's taught me to be more intentional about my value and why I want to do this. And so I plan to intentionally connect and resolve to connecting deeper, better, um, more simply, more authentically. And I cannot wait to do that. So cheers to you. Uh, Cheers to finishing 2020, however we can. And cheers to making plans and being better in 2021.